All right, so what's going on with positron decay? Um, you probably have heard that bananas are radioactive because of the potassium in them. The potassium in them. Now, there's actually a couple different ways that unstable potassium atoms can decay, but we're going to focus on one here, and that is positron decay. Rarely, you'll get a potassium atom releasing a positron. Now, a positron is antimatter. It's an anti-electron. But antimatter being the evil twin of regular matter, this evil twin electron has a lot of the same properties. A lot of the same properties are exactly the same. And a lot of them are exactly the opposite. So you're going to get this electron. It's not negative. It's positive. But like a regular electron, no mass, at least not enough mass to be of consequence. It does have mass, but nothing compared to a proton or a neutron. And instead of being a negative one here, it's actually a positive one. So making very clear, this is a positron. So what's going to be left of old potassium here once the positron goes away? So charge is conserved. If you're releasing a positive, then you can only have you'll have to have less positive than when you started. You know, if a plus one charge leaves, you gotta have one less positive, which means one less proton. A proton is becoming a neutron. So the mass doesn't change because the total number of nucleotide, or um, not nucle but nucleons stays the same. So the mass stays the same. One of the protons has become a neutron, which makes the atomic number one less. And which means that uh, if you want to look at the periodic table, where are you going to find the product? It'll be one step over to the left. Thinking that through. Yeah, that makes sense. One step over to the left. And in this case with potassium, well, it, it, it's one step. It's already on the far left side, so you have to go up one level and to the right. So it's going to be argon. So that's where argon comes from. Unstable potassium, well, it's one way we get argon. Anyway, so positron decay, your atomic number goes down by one, but your mass doesn't change because an electron's mass is so tiny and an anti-electron's mass is equally tiny that we don't even bother to count it. But it is an example of antimatter created even in your own body. So... I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.